Hello students, welcome to Grade Booster. In this video, we are going to learn about heredity. Let us begin the topic by knowing what is heredity. In this video clip, we can see a mother and a baby. If we observe the characteristics of the baby, baby has got a head, a body, two hands, two legs, two eyes, mouth, nose. All these are the human characteristics. From where do the baby get these characteristics? From their parents. So living organisms get their characteristics about their basic body design from their parents. Now let us see the definition of heredity. What is heredity? The inheritance of traits from parents to offsprings is called heredity. So, to understand this definition, we need to know the meaning of inheritance and traits. Now, let us see what is inheritance. Inheritance is the process by which the characteristics are passed from parents to children. The characteristics are passed in the form of genetic information, that is, in the form of DNA. Now, what are traits? Traits are the special characteristics of an individual organism. Some examples of traits are skin color, height, eye color, hair type, etc. Different individuals have different traits. The traits are of two different types. Let us understand them with the help of an example. Here we have the family of Shamlal and Radeji. Shamlal has got brown color hair and his skin tone is little dark. If we look at Radheji, she has a fair skin and black hair. Let us see their children. This is Ramlal and this is Bhimlal. Ramlal has got brown hair and fair skin. That means the traits in Ramlal are inherited from his parents. He inherited the trait of brown hair from his father and he got the trait fair skin from his mother Radheji. Let us look at Bhimlal. Bhimlal is little dark in complexion. He got the dark complexion trait from his father and he has got the black hair and he got this trait from his mother. Here we have seen how Ramlal and Bhimlal inherited traits from their parents. The traits that are inherited from parents are called inherited traits. There are another type of traits called as acquired traits. Let us look at Ramlal and Bhimlal. Ramlal has got a hole in his ear lobe. He got it by ear piercing. So this is a character specifically found in Ramlal which he did not inherited from his parents. In the same way, Bhimlal has developed muscles by doing exercise. Means Bhimlal did not inherited this characteristic of muscular nature from his parents. He got it by doing some physical exercise. So these kind of traits are called as acquired traits. Ramlal and Bhimlal Whatever the traits that they have inherited from their parents, they can pass the traits to their next generation. But they cannot pass their acquired traits to the next generation. The examples of acquired traits are bodybuilding, that means developing muscles, and skills like painting, singing, dancing, etc. How does the inheritance of traits takes place in organisms? The inheritance of traits takes place through the transfer of genetic material. In organisms, the genetic material is in the form of chromosomes. Chromosomes are made up of DNA and the DNA is made up of smaller units called genes. Every characteristic of an organism is controlled by a specific gene. During sexual reproduction, the father and mother contributes equal amounts of DNA. That means for every individual characteristics, the offsprings get two genes, one gene from mother 
and one gene from father. For example, the gene that decides the skin color will be contributed by father as well as by mother. That means for every individual characteristic, there are two copies of genes. We all inherited our characteristics from our parents. This is called heredity. Now, here arises a question. If traits are inherited from parents, then why the parents and offsprings or children are not exactly identical? Let us find out the reason. The parents and the children are not exactly identical due to variations. Do you know what are variations? Variations are the differences in characteristics of a specific population. Let us understand these variations with some good examples. Here we can see a dog population. All these are different dogs. All are dogs, but they are different. Each one of it has got some different characteristics. So these different characteristics are called as variations. In the same way, here we can see the human population. If we look at this human population, all the humans, they may share a similar body design. But even then, there are so many differences. Differences in their skin color, difference in their earlobes type. Some have attached earlobes, some people have free earlobes. And the color of eyes and their hair type, like this, there are so many differences in their features. So all these differences are called variations. So we can define the variations as the differences in characteristics observed in a specific population are called variations. Now here we get one more question. Why do certain populations have less variations? For example, here we can see the population of a sugar cane. This is a sugar cane crop. So here we have so many sugar canes. See here, we can find very little differences between two sugar canes. When we have seen the dog population, we could find so many differences between one dog and the other dog. But when we look at the sugar cane crop, we find very less differences between one sugar cane and the other sugar cane. So what is the factor that determines the amount of variations in a particular species or in a particular population? The amount of variations in a population depends upon their mode of reproduction. So this is linked to the process of reproduction. Let us see how. Variations in asexual reproducing organisms. Here is a parent organism. So we know that in the process of reproduction, the parent organism copies its genetic material, that is its DNA, and it shares that copy to the young one or the offspring. So babies, they get the copies of genetic material from their parents. So this is called as heredity, inheritance. We know that, already we discussed about it. So here, in case of asexual reproduction, there is only one parent, only one organism is involved in asexual reproduction. So this organism's genetic material is copied or duplicated and it is passed to the young ones. So during this copying of genetic material, during the copying of DNA, there is a chance for errors or inaccuracies in that copying process. So these errors or inaccuracies leads to some variations in the next generation that is in the offsprings. So that is the reason why the offsprings or the babies are not exactly identical to their parents. So the inaccuracies in the DNA copying leads to variations in asexually reproducing organisms. So we find less variations in the plants that reproduce by asexual methods. Now let us see the variations in sexually reproducing organisms. We all know about sexual reproduction. In sexual reproduction, we find two parents. So there is a male organism and a female organism. Now, the babies get their genetic material from both their parents. The DNA of mother and the DNA of father, 
both the DNAs they get combined to form a new DNA. This process is called recombination of DNA. So during this recombination of DNA, a new DNA is created from mother and father's DNA. So this DNA is different from the mother DNA and from the father DNA. So this DNA has got the characteristics from mother, father as well as some new characteristics. So obviously there are more variations in the organisms that reproduce sexually. So the recombination of DNA leads to variations in sexually reproducing organisms. Now let us see how do these variations help the organisms. Is there any use of these variations? In many cases the variations helps the organisms. Here we can see certain organisms they have some special variations or distinct characteristics which help them to survive in harsh climatic conditions. Variations help the organisms to survive in harsh climatic conditions. Here we can see a bacteria. So this is a population of bacteria which survive in normal temperature conditions. But one of these bacteria developed a variation. So this is a new variant of bacteria developed from the normal group. So this new variant it can withstand very high temperature. So it is an advantage to that bacteria if it is exposed to very high temperature it is not destroyed. It can survive in the extremely high temperature conditions. So it becomes an advantage to it. So variations help the organisms to survive in harsh climatic conditions. Next we see the accumulation of variations. So we learned what are variations. Now let us see what is accumulation of variations. We learned that characteristics or traits inherited from parents to offsprings. So when this process takes place new characteristics new variations also enter into the young generation or the new generation. So the new generation always gets the traits inherited from the parents at the same time new variations. So they have the collection of two one inherited from the parent generation and the other newly acquired traits newly acquired characteristics. So now this organism reproduces again. So it passes the inherited traits and its variations to the next generation. The next generation receives these two along with the new variations. So in this way from generation to generation the variations get accumulated. It is called as accumulation of variations. Hope you all understood about the heredity, variations and accumulation of variations. We will continue this session in the next video. If you like this video please like it share it and please subscribe to great booster channel for more interesting cbse videos thanks for watching please like the video please share this video with your friends please subscribe to great booster channel press the bell icon to get all the latest updates check the description to find links of other useful videos check the end screens for our new videos